Good morning and welcome. We're happy to have you with us here this morning. Let's begin by singing hymn number 21. Beloved, let us love, for love is God. In God alone hath love its true abode. Hymn number 21. The scriptural selection is from Romans. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Let's pray for the congregation, first in silence, then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. I'll read the spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's sing hymn number 65. From glory unto glory, be this our joyous song. From glory unto glory, tis love that leads us on. As wider yet and wider, the rising splendor gl splendors glow. What wisdom is revealed to us, what freedom we may know. Hymn number 65. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. The Wednesday testimony meetings include singing hymns, readings from the Bible, and the Christian Science textbook, as well as the opportunity to hear how people are living what they are learning from their study of Christian science. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services are held online and in person. We thank you for observing social distancing and for wearing a mask. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online for kids and teens. These free one-hour classes are held each Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. 
If you know of children and teens who may be interested, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Third Church's reading room is open, and all are welcome. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study. Here you may also purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The reading room also has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly, available to read and purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. You're now able to hear a replay of Lana Ingwersen's Christmas Eve talk titled, Christmas, It's All About Love. It's online on our website, thirdchurchnyc.com. The solo, sung by Jenny Lynn Stewart, is titled, Love. The words are from a poem written by Mary Baker Eddy. The music is by Frederick Root. Thank you. 
Thank you. Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. Today's sermon can be found on page 68 of the full text edition of the Christian Science Quarterly and page 20 of the citation edition. The subject is love. The golden text is from the Holy Bible, New Living Translation, 1 John. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The responsive reading is from Psalms and Ephesians. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindnesses and tender mercies who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, 
The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible, 1 John. God is love. Psalms, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Deuteronomy. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. Isaiah now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. I'll read from The Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. God is love. Can we ask him to be more? Shall we plead for more at the open fount, which is pouring forth more than we accept? The starting point of divine science is that God, spirit, is all in all, and that there is no other might nor mind, that God is love, and therefore he is divine principle. All substance, intelligence, wisdom, being, immortality, cause and effect belong to God. These are his attributes, the eternal manifestations of the infinite divine principle, love. Love, the divine principle, is the father and mother of the universe, including man. The precise form of God must be of small importance in comparison with the sublime question, what is infinite mind or divine love? Divine science, the word of God, saith to the darkness upon the face of error, God is all in all, and the light of ever-present love illumines the universe. Let us rid ourselves of the belief that man is separated from God and obey only the divine principle, life, and love. Here is the great point of departure for all true spiritual growth. Psalms, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Ruth, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. And Malon and Kilian died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest I will go, and where thou lodgest. I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God 
my God. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother, and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Divine love always has met, and always will meet, every human need. The miracle of grace is no miracle to love. In the following psalm, one word shows, though faintly, the light which Christian science throws on the scriptures by substituting for the corporeal sense the incorporeal or spiritual sense of deity. Psalm 23. Divine love is my shepherd, I shall not want. Love maketh me to lie down in green pastures, Love leadeth me beside the still waters. Love restoreth my soul, spiritual sense. Love leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for love is with me. Love's rod and love's staff, they comfort me. Love prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Love anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house, the consciousness of love, forever. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace, expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. Simply asking that we may love God will never make us love him, but the longing to be better and holier, expressed in daily watchfulness and in striving to assimilate more of the divine character, will mold and fashion us anew until we awake in his likeness. Whatever holds human thought in line with unselfed love receives directly the divine power. Psalms. O oh God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. But thou, O oh Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. Matthew. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Love redolent with unselfishness bathes all in beauty and light. We should love our enemies and help them on the basis of the golden rule, but avoid casting pearls before those who trample them underfoot, thereby robbing both themselves and others. To fear sin is to misunderstand the power of love and the divine science of being in man's relation to God, to doubt his government and distrust his omnipotent care. At all times and under all circumstances, overcome evil with good. Know thyself and God will supply the wisdom and the occasion for a victory over evil. Clad in the panoply of love, human hatred cannot reach you. The cement of a higher humanity will unite all interests in the one divinity. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. For true happiness, Man must harmonize with his principle, divine love. The Son must be in accord with the Father, in conformity with Christ. Let unselfishness, goodness, mercy, justice, health, holiness, love, the kingdom of heaven, reign within us. And sin, disease, and death will diminish until they finally disappear. Matthew. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Mark. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will, be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. John. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth and himself believed, and his whole house. Christianity, as Jesus taught it, was not a creed, nor a system of ceremonies, nor a special gift from a ritualistic Jehovah, but it was the demonstration of divine love, casting out error and healing the sick, 
not merely in the name of Christ or truth, but in demonstration of truth, as must be the case in the cycles of divine light. Universal love is the divine way in Christian science. Love for God and man is the true incentive in both healing and teaching. Love inspires, illumines, designates, and leads the way. Right motives give pinions to thought and strength and freedom to speech and action. The tender word and Christian encouragement of an invalid, pitiful patience with his fears and the removal of them, are better than hecatombs of gushing theories, stereotyped borrowed speeches, and the doling of arguments, which are but so many parodies on legitimate Christian science aflame with divine love. The genuine Christian scientist is adding to his patient's mental and moral power and is increasing his patient's spirituality while restoring him physically through divine love. Sorrow is turned into joy when the body is controlled by spiritual life, truth, and love. If the scientist reaches his patient through divine love, the healing work will be accomplished at one visit, and the disease will vanish into its native nothingness like dew before the morning sunshine. First John. <clears throat> Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Matthew. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Luke, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Romans. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Jesus' prayer, forgive us our debts, specified also the terms of forgiveness and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. The rich in spirit help the poor in one grand brotherhood, all having the same principle or father. And blessed is that man who seeth his brother's need and supplieth it, seeking his own in another's good. My weary hope tries to realize that happy day when man shall recognize the science of Christ and love his neighbor as himself, when he shall realize God's omnipotence and the healing power of the divine love in what it has done and is doing for mankind. The power of Christian science and divine love is omnipotent. It is indeed adequate to unclasp the hold and to destroy disease, sin, and death. First John, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. This is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. First Peter, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, 
that ye should inherit a blessing. The substance of all devotion is the reflection and demonstration of divine love, healing sickness, and destroying sin. Love one another, 1 John 3, 23, is the most simple and profound counsel of the inspired writer. Ask yourself, am I living the life that approaches the supreme good? Am I demonstrating the healing power of truth and love? If so, then the way will grow brighter unto the perfect day. Your fruits will prove what the understanding of God brings to man. Hold perpetually this thought, that it is the spiritual idea, the Holy Ghost and Christ, which enables you to demonstrate with scientific certainty the rule of healing, based upon its divine principle, love, underlying, overlying, and encompassing all true being. During the offertory, if you would like to make a donation, we ask that you place your, your offering in the pouches on either side of the congregation, observing social distancing, or consider making a donation online at thirdchurchnyc.com. Let's sing hymn number 330. The king of love, my shepherd, is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack, for I am his, and he is mine forever. 330.
I'll read the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. <laughs>